<laughs> Glasses are crooked. Okay, hi, this is Robin Bremer. RobinBremer.net is my website. And um, you can go there to get some information about publishing your book for $3.99. Uh, and if you go to Facebook, my profile, to get lots of video teaching that I do. And I hope that this video is okay that you can actually see and hear me because I'm using, um, uh, I have a very loud air conditioning in my house, so I am using my mic. So today I'm going to be sharing on some really cool information that God shared with me about soul cleansing prayer. Uh, I got the prayer from Kat Kerr, but as time went on, the Lord kept adding things to it. And I wanted to share the, the things that the Lord shared with me uh, about the soul cleansing prayer and how powerful it really is. I also want to share with you a little bit about what God showed me about faith, about everlasting and eternal, eternal, eternal life and everlasting life, and uh, what that means to us right now. So I got hair on my lip here, or lip on my hair on my lip. Anyway, okay, so. I guess I'll start with everlasting, etern and eternity. Um, I'm learning about how we can bend time. I'm learning about how time is under our authority and our dominion. If you look at Genesis 1, um, you will see all the seven days where God created everything. Then he created man and he gave us authority and dominion over everything he created with his hands. So go back and look in Genesis 1, all the things he created. And he gave us authority over that and over the planet because we have a physical body and we have a spirit. But he gave the physical earth, to, uh, us authority over the physical earth. So if you want to really know what you have authority over, go back and look. One of the things is time. And it's something that's not really being taught in the church. It's just like we're just beginning to come into these places where we understand that we have dominion over time, matter, weather, animal kingdom, uh, plant kingdom. Uh, all kinds of stuff. We're just discovering that we have authority and dominion over it. And I'm just stepping into this realm. I'm just learning about this realm. I'm just um, really excited because it's just, it's becoming real to me. And I'm beginning to walk in it. So I started, God had me kind of learn about in Genesis what was created in the first and second of Genesis and what he gave us authority and dominion over. And then he had me looking up everlasting life and eternal, eternal life. And that actually it means the same thing. And he showed me, he took me back in faith because I grew up under the faith movement. I grew up with Kenneth Copeland, uh, Fred Price, Creflo Dollar. Um, those are all my spiritual fathers. And um, so I kind of came up in, in, in faith and then I moved more into um, just, I don't even know what it's called where you actually have a supernatural everyday relationship with God and where you begin to walk in sonship. And that's kind of where I'm adding, uh, where I'm at now. I learned about the courts of heaven and uh, spirit, soul, and body. And there's so much. It's, it, I love the word of God because it's like an onion. You just take off layer by layer by layer by layer. You can approach healing in so many different ways. So many revelations that you can get healing but one of the things that god is teaching me how i can get anything besides communion that's one of biggie for me but besides communion one of the ways that god is teaching me that you can get everything that the blood of jesus paid for you to have is through understanding time and this is like new for me and it is so so exciting if and this is the way god put it to me and you know he can say in a moment in a second of time he can tell you a whole book's worth of information and then to turn around and to tell it to someone else, you just don't quite have the words for, for it. So I'm going to try to explain to you what he, what he said to me. He said the time that God lives outside of time and that we're in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus is inside of us. And Jesus lives outside of time. Everything, okay, I'm going to get on a side note here. I'm going to try to come back to that time. <laughs> um, Okay, got, got to take some more notes here real quick. Um, I forgot my whole train. Okay, let's go back to time. Um, that we, okay, um, I know what I was going to say. Uh, in the Bible, I forget what 
book it is where uh, everything is not everything under the sun has already been done. That scripture that always annoyed me because there are always new things to discover. And God just showed me right now while I'm talking to you, just revealed something to me that's pretty excited, exciting. The reason he said that scripture, and I finally have understanding of it, is because everything under the sun has been done. Because there is no time. That before we even sinned, before we were even conceived, before we were even born, Jesus already died for our sins. Okay, He already paid the price for our sins and the result of our sins. So it was already done before there, there is no time. If you can just grasp that we are outside of time and that we have authority and dominion over time, you can have the faith to be healed because faith is believing that you already have it, that you've already received it. And we've already have it and we already received it because it was done. Everything was done before we were born. It's already done. Even before I would get any sickness or disease, Jesus already healed me. So I shouldn't even have to deal with symptoms. I shouldn't have to even deal with that harassment. As I learned to walk in this, instead of getting a cold and getting healed an hour later, I can walk in like Kenneth Hagin said, that he never got sick. Once he grasped uh, faith, he never got sick. Well, time, I can have faith for everything that I need because all things have been given to me for life and godliness. Everything, it starts in the spirit realm and manifests in the physical realm. It's already been done. Jesus was the Lamb of God that died before, you know, a lot before time existed. He already died. He already did it all. Okay, so let me go over the scripture and kind of the journey that God took me on in this. Uh, this scripture is John 5, 24. And um, he who believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. Okay, everlasting life means forever. That means before and after, forever life, Everla uh, uh, eternal, everlasting is life that lasts forever, okay? So that means we have authority over time, dominion, and everything else. And the word life means absolute fullness of life. It means Zoe, it's Zoe, Zoe life, God life, life from heaven. The, uh, the definition in the Strong's means absolute fullness of life, okay? So that's really exciting. And it says, and shall not come into judgment. Okay, the fall of man came into judgment and curses, it, it brought curses onto the earth, which means death. It passed from life to death. And death, okay, the judgment, it says death, the judgment, if you look up the word judgment in this scripture, in the Strong's Concordance in the original language, it means death compromising shall not be passed from, okay, has, okay, wait. <laughs> Has not come into judgment, but has passed from from death into life. Death is con death comprises of all the miseries arising from sin. Oh, I love that definition. That is so so awesome. Okay, and we have come into life. So all the misery arising from sin, from man's fall, is what death is. Okay, so that is going to play into over here, the soul cleansing prayer, okay? Then all the promises are now because there is no time in the spirit realm. There is no time in the spirit realm. We can go, we can go, we can travel in the spirit realm. Uh, God can translate us, transport us, whatever. Uh, there is no time, there is no space, there is no, uh, it, it just changes everything. And we're gonna begin to walk in this in these end times. We as mature sons of God are going to begin to walk in this stuff. Okay, now if I go into John 17, 3, it says, this is kind of my um, confession. I live in everlasting and eternal life, in the absolute fullness of life. And this is eternal life that you may know him, the only true God, the son Jesus Christ who you have sent. That John 17, 3 says, and this is eternal life. Eternal life, everybody, get this. Eternal life is knowing Jesus. Now, you don't know Jesus by reading a book. Look at here. Here's one of my books, my latest book. See, if you read this book, do you think you're going to know me? You're going to know about me, okay? You are going to know about me. But eternal life is knowing God face 
to face relationship like Moses talked to a friend face to face with God. That is what we can have. We have everything, all the blessings of the Old Testament and the blessings of the New Testament. We have all of the promises. We have everything. It is so exciting. So um, that is uh, John 17, 3. So, and this is eternal life that you that we may know you the only true God in Jesus Christ. So there's no man between you and God and you and Jesus. You have direct line to them. You can know them personally, intimately, face to face like Moses did. You can step into the spirit realm. You can step into the heavenly places. It belongs to the Christian. Okay, this is the scripture that I eat, breathe, and live off of. Isaiah 53, 4, and 5. This is what God showed me. He says, this is what redeemed from death into eternity and everlasting life means. Now, eternity and everlasting life is ours now. The qualifying thing is not death, okay? If we had to die to have eternity and uh, eternal life and everlasting life, then it, it was all for nothing. See, Jesus died to give us eternity and everlasting life now, so let's say if death was the qualifying thing in order to have these things, we died in Christ Jesus. We were baptized in Christ Jesus, and we were risen from the dead in Christ Jesus. So if the qualifying thing was in order for you to visit heaven, have a supernatural relationship with God, to hear his voice, to see him face to face, to experience the angels, to uh, change matter, to do everything Jesus did in greater works, uh, walk on water, change matter, um, uh, be transported in the spirit, be um, uh, uh, tra um, tra translated, uh, what's the word, um, transformed on the figure of Mount, the Mount. Um, if those, if death was the thing that got us there, then we died in Christ Jesus. So there you go, we qualify again. But let's look at Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. It says, he was wounded for our, and then the word means, if you look it up in the original language, I love the original language. It says, he was wounded for our sickness, our disease, our affliction, our sadness, our evil, and our calamity. Okay, that's what he was wounded for. Okay, and he carried our, the word is sorrow. If you look at the word sorrow, it means physical, mental, pain, grief, and sorrow. Okay, now remember, this is my scripture that shows me eternity, and everlasting life. This was done before we were born, before he died, he did all this before we even became born again, okay? So, but he was wounded for our, for our what? In the original language, for our sin, for our rebellion, for our guilt punishment, for our transgression and for our offering. Isn't that awesome? And he was bruised for our guilt, condition, consequences of or punishment of sin wow that is so cool and the chastisement of our peace was upon him now peace means completeness safety soundness in body welfare health prosperity peace whole entire contentment friendship covenant relationship and with his stripes we are made healed healthy and healthful that is so exciting now that is one of my favorite favorite scriptures that's the one i confess that's the one i eat off of and that's i say 53 4 and 5 and when i take communion that's one of my scriptures too and i i absolutely love that now i want to go over i'm gonna i made these into a pdf file and on my um angels supernatural wine supernatural and other things uh on my um uh, group i will post this um that you can get a copy of it. So the soul cleansing prayer that God took me into, that Kat Kerr does, uh, because things come on us. When we watch TV, which I absolutely hate TV, the only thing I watch on TV, uh, um, the only thing I watch is um, hockey, because <laughs> I love hockey, in case you didn't know that. And, uh, everyone, and we'll watch movies, but we can turn them off, we can shut them down. Uh, so... I hate everything else on TV because the news prophesies to you, puts you in fear, uh, makes you think about that. What you focus on, you get. And um, even if you're not listening to the TV or 
and it's on or the radio and it's on, it goes into your mind because it's frequencies, it's sound, it affects your atmosphere, it affects everything around you. So because of the, there's frequencies, sound, sight, uh, subliminal messages being blasted at you to buy certain foods, to get certain diseases, to, uh, to get, expect all this, um, you need to take authority over those things by doing a soul cleansing prayer. And this is, uh, Kat Kerr teaches about soul cleansing prayer, but God showed me that my body has certain triggers in it. Certain events that happen in my life create it certain, are connected to certain emotions or certain sights. And when I see the sights or something that is similar, I have triggers in my body like everybody else that causes emotions and causes my physical body to react. And so I have been trying to get to some of these triggers and to stop this from happening. And he said, when you pray that soul cleansing prayer that you need to loosen off of you, not just off of your soul, but off of your body and your mind. Okay, your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. So not just off your soul, but I have to say off of my mind, off my soul, and off of my body. So this is the prayer God gave me to say. Um, I loosen every, this is really cool, every form of darkness off of my soul, body, spirit, and mind. Every form of death. Now, that's what he showed me here when I was sharing early with, earlier with you with Everlasting Life. He said, loosen off of your spirit, off your, your, your spirit's already perfect, off of your soul, your body, and your mind, every form of death. Okay? Loosen off of my mind, my soul, my spirit, every self-deception, religious lies, generational curses, sin and iniquity of myself and my ancestors, all forms of darkness, profane, profane language, pride, fear, offense, religious spirit, familiar spirit, selfishness, unforgiveness, anger, shame, condemnation, ungodly imaginations ungodly words I have spoken or were spoken over me and fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's a good one. I love that. All diseases, and this is when he added, all zipped up diseases because in your DNA is zipped up diseases from your parents. If you listen to uh, Dr. Leaf, I forget her first name. Uh, Dr. Leaf taught is a neuros neuroplastic neuroplasticity surgeon or she works with the brain she's a doctor and she's awesome uh, and she talks about how um, diseases are passed down to generations but in our DNA and they're but they're zipped up and certain events or trauma unzip those diseases and release it in our bodies and so God told me to command all zipped up diseases to when I take communion and when I do a soul cleansing prayer to leave my body. Uh, also, these people who believe in reincarnation, the devil is taking what is, he's taking some true facts and he's twisting it. And he's, yeah, Caroline Leaf, that's her name. And the, the devil is taking truths and he's twisting it. Okay, so reincarnation people who believe in reincarnation who have these memories what's really happening is their ancestors memories is in their dna and they're just having the dna they're just having um memories flashback whatever you want to call it from their ancestors for example um if your ancestors was um you're a male and one of your ancestors was a female and she had she was raped or something then that trauma would be recorded in her dna and then when she got pregnant that trauma in her dna would pass down just like the eye color the hair color that memory and that trauma would end the result of that sin and that trauma would be passed down to the next generation and so on and so on so the memory that this person is having who thinks that they're reincarnated are really having a memory that's in the DNA encoded in the DNA of their ancestors. 
So they're just being deceived. The enemy is just taking that, twisting it and distorting it and, and causing them to be in, de uh, deceived. Anyway, back to this prayer. Um, uh, I release from my body, my soul and my mind, all inflammation because inflammation is the source of all diseases. I release all conscious and unconscious wrong thinking. Now, if you listen to Dr. Caroline Leaf, she talks about how you have unconscious thinking and you can't really deal with it till you bring it into your conscious mind and you think about it and you go, uh, and uh, anyway, get into her stuff, it's really cool. So conscious and unconscious wrong thinking and lies and, un and, and uh, trauma, um, you have to, um, you know, I, I, I cleanse my soul. I release that off of my body, my soul. Uh, wrong thinking, ungodly triggers, which I talked about early. Lying symptoms of sickness. I release off of my body, my soul, and my mind. Aging. Aging is under the curse. Um, menopause is under the curse. And someday I'm going to have a download from God, and I am going to write a book that's going to become a bestseller on aging and how uh, menopause is under the curse and how you do not have to go through it. But I'm still going through it and I am still conquering it and still believing God for that download that I can save other women from going through menopause. I believe I'm going to get that revelation. I'm going to write that book and it's going to be a bestseller. So agree with me on that. Okay, I also release off of me all disease, all death, and every sin that I've committed against my body. Now go in Jesus' name. I break off and loosen any soul ties with a person, place, or thing not of God, and I send every evil, every evil thing that the enemy has sent into my atmosphere out now. I call and speak for the atmosphere of heaven to always be around me. Okay? And those are things that God showed me that he has put into my soul cleansing prayer which I am excited about. It's kind of like my little, uh, my little confession book here. This is how this is how some of my books got started. Is with my confession book. I don't know, camera. Can you see that? And I just have scriptures. And this soul cleansing prayer is kind of like that. It, it develops over time. It grows. It matures. Uh, then you want every remember everybody that you had sex with. You become one. Two shall become one. That's why you're not supposed to have fornication. That's why you're not supposed to commit adultery, and that's why you're not supposed to have sex with a prostitute, because that multiplies your um, uh, changes in your DNA. Everything that that person, you're, you're exchanging seed when you become one. And the mystery of the church is man and God becoming one, uh, Christ and, and, and the church becoming one, and sex when a man and a woman have sex, Satan has taken that concept and distorted it and twisted it because now what he's done is you're, you're exchanging DNA. Everything in that person's history now becomes part of your history. Every demon attached to them, whether you're, still, whether you're married to this person and they did something or they're unsaved and you're unequally yoked, you want to, uh, every time you have sex or every day you want to do a soul cleansing prayer that releases that ungodly, hook up uh, off of you um, and that releases your godliness into your spouse unsaved spouse you know anyway so uh, so everyone you had sex with that you have a transfer going on there so you want to get rid of that you want to say uh, a soul cleansing prayer you, you want to get rid of it um, and then you call that you've given away a layer of your soul basically when you have sex with somebody sparky stop but um, you break off and loosen any soul ties of a person, place, or thing, and so on. And call layers of your soul back. Um, and um, then you just all bind it. You just, you know, I make this, uh, I bind everything from heaven culture, everything blood of Jesus paid for me, kingdom culture, everything God, Jesus paid for me to have. I receive it now in Jesus' name. And by faith, without time or because we don't have time or distance, we receive everything that blood of Jesus paid for us to have, and we receive it now. It's ours. So that's basically what I want to share with you. I also want to share with you, if anybody wants, um, not that I'm famous or anything, although I have been on TV and the radio a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, if anybody wants a signed 
prophetic, prophetically signed copy of my uh, book on DNA, uh, you can send $14 um, and I'll ship, I'll, I'll uh, pray and uh, you're not paying for a prophetic anything because that's free, but I'll sign it and I'll pray and uh, whatever I receive from God, I'll put there, but you'll receive my latest book and this talks about DNA. Uh, the stuff I shared today isn't in this book because the stuff I shared today is new revelation. Uh, I can't wait till to write everything in a book because then I would have one giant book instead of 50 books. <laughs> so anyway, so if you want to uh, assign prophetic copy of this book mailed to your home, um, you could just uh, send me uh, $14 and I will send that out to you. That includes shipping and everything. I only have two on hand right now. So the first two people get this right away. The rest I have to order and bring in. Uh, but this book is my favorite. This book, maybe this is a, a book I'll send to Sid Roth and some of the other places and uh, Deborah Sweetie. Deborah, oh, by the way, Deborah Sweeten, whose uh, TV show I was on several times now, she has an endorsement in here. Uh, also, um, Michael Turbo, the guy, uh, I don't know if I'm saying it's right. He does uh, a lot of things with angels. He's really awesome. Brenda Craig. Her books are really, really awesome. Um, and um, Val Wolf, who does Deliverance in Africa, it's really awesome stuff. You need to get into her videos. And then Bernadette Peasy, she's, she does some awesome stuff too. So you can get that. Oh, and this Friday, and every Friday till May 18th, um, you can get one of my, a different book every Friday from starting this Friday till uh, June 18th. A free book on Kindle. I'm giving away a free book every Friday on Kindle, so you can get some of my books free. I love to give away stuff. I love to sow seeds. You really so, so I love to bless you all. And if you are an author, here comes my commercial. <laughs> if you are an author or know somebody who is an author, currently I have two openings right now. Uh, I like to keep my authors limited that I'm working with publishing their books so I can focus on them because when I was doing like five and six and seven, it was like, oh my God, this is terrible. This is overwhelming. So I keep my authors whose books I publish down to a minimum. So for $399, I will take your book. I will format it. I do not, I, it includes everything except copy editing. If you ever look at my post, I am a terrible speller. I don't care. I'm not going to go back and correct it. I'm a terrible speller. I'm terrible on grammar and punctuation. I'm a hick from the sticks. And I don't care if that's me. That's what you get. So um, it does not include copy editing. Get your Sunday school teacher or best friend or someone else to copy edit it for you. But it includes a professional cover for Kindle or print. It includes formatting your book. It includes um, uploading all relevant documentation, uh, getting your uh, accounts open. I, I uh, published a book through Creative Space and KDP.Amazon. So your book is published in Kindle and your book is published as a print book. And it goes around the world. It gets on all the their, uh, catalogs around the world. and um, it does, you know, it's great. For $3.99, most people cost a charge of $500 at the very least. I've seen someone charge that. I don't know about the quality of the work. Usually it's cost $1,000 to $2,000 to do what I do for $3.99. So um, if you know an author, especially my niche is really the authors that are walking in the supernatural things of God. Yes, uh, Val Wolf. Yes, she... You want to check out her videos on deliverance. They're awesome. Uh, Michael uh, Turbo, check out his videos and his uh, lots of live stuff he does um, on uh, Facebook. And Deborah Sweeten, it's, it's a Deborah Sweeten show. She gets a lot of guests in there. Her heart is really ministry uh, and evangelism. And she does a lot of stuff with overseas people. And then Bernadette, um, she does a lot of stuff with talking to God and revelations about God. And uh, let's see, um, Brenda does a lot of stuff in um, ascending and, um, and just uh, teaches you how to have a supernatural relationship with God, how to hear from God. Really good stuff. Uh, so check out all of those people who uh, support me, who gave uh, endorsements in the book. And remember, if you want a copy of one of these books signed and a, a, a directly from me with a prophetic message, uh, send me $14 and I'll get that out to you right away. Otherwise, if you wait long enough, you can probably get one free because I always give away stuff free as a Kindle book. Um, so that's it. Just 
love you guys. I pray that these revelations come alive for you. And if you go to my um, page or my group, Angels, Supernatural, Courts of Heaven, and other supernatural stuff, something like that, um, you, I'll try to put a post down here. You can get a copy of the PDF that has everything down there because it's hard to take notes. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a person who has to see. I have to see rather than hear. So if I can see something in front of me, I do better than if I'm just listening. Um, so anyway, that's probably why I write so many books. Okay, love you all. Talk to you all later. Bye. Have a blessed day.